Hello, lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. All right, we return to look at backpropagation for neural networks. Basically, how do we minimize the cost function for a neural network? In other words, if we get a hypothesis function that allows us to make predictions using a training set, how do we know how accurate our hypothesis function is and how do we make it better? With backpropagation. Okay. So strap on in, this is going to be a wild ride. Uh, we are going to look at it from a high level, uh, simple kind of one training example use case. Um, and then I'll end by kind of talking about what it's doing. Um, and then in the next video, we will uh, talk about a training set with more than one example. <laughs> and then we'll go through like, what is the full process of um, doing forward propagation to get your hypothesis function and then applying back propagation to that to get the best hypothesis function that you can. Yay. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so I have my, my ideal chalk went somewhere. Anyway, um, I don't have my chalk, but I'll just get a tiny piece. So I have this cute little rainbow neural network here where we have four layers. So our input layer or layer one is where our training examples are. Um, you can kind of, I guess, ignore the fact that I just, oh, just one training example. Um, but basically we can represent that with X comma Y. So X is the input data point and then Y is going to be your label. So let's say you have a, a picture of an apple um, and you're using the neural network to represent that picture of an apple. Um, and so X would be, say, the image picture that you have, um, or maybe it's just one pixel in that case. And then Y would be the output predicted value, so the label of Apple. So again, uh, what you would do to get your hypothesis function, um, H of X, which I don't have a ton of space, um, H theta of X, um, pretend that says theta and it's very tiny. Um, <laughs> you do forward propagation, um, where you go through and you apply your training um, examples to get um, activation values for each of these nodes and you go through the layers um, and then you pop out the hypothesis function at the end. Um, but what we're going to do is figure out um, how, to, how to make the best hypothesis function that we can. So to start, we are going to define, um, actually I should back up and I say what we need to compute is the cost function, j of theta, of some big matrix theta, um, where theta uh, represents all of the parameters for each node in each layer. So there's multiple parameters for a particular node, multiple nodes, big matrix. But that's fine. That's why we use matrix notation. We don't have to write it all out. We can just use matrices. So we need to get the cost function, and then we need to figure out um, how to get the smallest cost function. And again, the cost function is how um, accurate our predictions are, our hypothesis function output with the actual training data set. So to do that, we use tricks of calculus, yay calculus, um, and we'll take a partial derivative with respect to um, this, oh, actually, with respect to each uh, parameter in every single layer. So for each parameter in a particular node and for each of the layers, uh, we are going to take the partial derivative with respect to the whole cost function. And then this will basically help us figure out if uh, our cost function is getting smaller because the ideal is like you want your cost function to be down here where um, there's an equal match between like you get the same predicted value um, that your actual value is. In other words, the derivative would be zero. So if you're up here, your slope is going to be high and you know that you need to get a smaller slope so you know which direction to move in. Okay, and if you have questions on why that works, that's another video, but that was kind of a quick overview reminder. Um, this is a member of the real set. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do now that we are like, this is what we need to calculate. Um, well, I guess all this is this. <laughs> <laughs> is define the error of a particular node in a particular layer. And so we are going to define 
uh, this little lowercase Greek D delta, I think, something, um, for a given layer, again, so particular node, particular layer, we are going to define this to be the error um, of node J. So for example, node green uh, 3, if this is 1, 2, 3, so node 3 for layer L. So in that case, it would be three layer, um, node 3 layer, layer 4. <laughs> I almost said layer L. Um, and so this is the uh, error with our neural network activation value or uh, lay, uh, node 3 is going to have some value based on the parameters um, and each of the nodes are going to have a value, right? And so we have to figure out you know, if we get a bad prediction, which node or nodes do we need to tweak? Like which ones are contributing to cause us to get this bad prediction? We need to go through and figure out the values of all of them and how they contribute to the output. What is the error in them? Um, so that way we can fix them and get a better prediction, right? Because we have a neural network now. We have a whole set of things that are contributing to our outcome and we need to figure out which ones are working and which ones we need to fix. Okay, so now that we have this value um, or this kind of term that we've defined, um, let's go ahead and figure out how we calculate that for each node. So we are going to start, since it's back propagation, we start going backwards. Yay! I like when things make sense like that, when the names are accurate to what we're doing. Okay, so we have our uh, delta for layer four, and that's going to be pretty straightforward because it's really just um, the, well, and my drawing doesn't match what we're going to do because we just have one, uh, one node because we want to keep it simple, but, uh, well, actually, okay, ignore, ignore that. Okay, so for each node in the fourth layer, we have three of them. Layer four, um, we are going to calculate the error with the prediction. Cool. Okay. That one's pretty straightforward. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, to generalize this or to vectorize it, that's where, actually, I gotta forget my J there. Speaking of, I wrote the vector notation, I tried to write the vector notation half and half. Confusing. Okay. So we calculate the error for each node. So the activation value for the first node subtracted um, the, the, um, the training example y, and then we do that for each of the nodes. And so the vectorized version vector would be um, what I was half writing. So you just, uh, for all of the nodes, minus y. Okay. So la la la. So it will have um, this will have dimensions equal to the total number of output units. So in this case, we just have one, but you probably have more than that. Okay. So once we have the first error for the last layer, we're doing backprop. Confusing. First layer for the last layer. First error for the last layer. Words are hard sometimes. Okay. So then we do um, the same thing for each of the layers going back towards layer one. Um, so we have uh, the error for layer three is going to equal, okay, now, since we don't have our just handy dandy prediction, um, we need to calculate um, the, uh, the error with all of the parameter terms. Okay, so that is gonna look like because, you know, oops, I don't know why. right in theta, a little funky. Okay, so our parameters for layer three. So we're going to have to do, take the transpose of this to get the dimensions right so that we can multiply. And then we are going to do the element wise. Uh, this is one of the ways to write element wise product or point wise product with 
the derivative of the Zeeman function where our variable is of the third layer. Okay, um, so again, this is the derivative of the Zeeman function and what that equals um, where can I write this? Um, so the, the derivative of the Zeeman function for our purposes is going to equal, actually that's confusing, sorry. Writing on the fly here, here we go. Okay, so, oh, I'll do it in a different color. Yeah, what's the color I haven't used yet? Um, blue, my rainbow didn't get to blue. Okay, so this is gonna equal um, the activation uh, node in that layer and then dot star element wise product of one minus the, that activation node. Okay, and that's basically just like if you were to plug in uh, and do the derivative for the Zeeman function, that's what you would get. Um, la la la. Okay. Cool. So now the, the next layer is basically the exact same um, as the, the third layer. Um, both of these are hidden layers. So all of the hidden layers will look like this. Ooh, I know. Colors. Okay. So this is our input layer. Input, or sorry, huh, output layer. We're going backwards. Output, output, output layer. Um, and then, ooh, I can use two colors at once. Ha <laughs> ha, fun. Um, so these are the hidden layers. So all of the hidden layers will be treated the same. Um, and so to quickly just write that so you can see, uh, we are going to, the things that change are the superscripts. Um, so we have our uh, matrix of parameters for layer two, again, transpose, multiply that by the error of the previous layer. So, um, delta three, and then dot star derivative of the Zeeman function for um, the second layer. There we go. Okay. And then you do not do the error for the first input. Why do you think that is, friends? Do, 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 do. Yeah, totally, because it's your actual values. So hopefully there's no error there. Yeah. These are the, the input values. These are your training examples that you are feeding into the data set. So those values match exactly because it's your training. Um, okay, and then finally, what you do, um, we'll just say N for however many layers you do. Um, although I guess in this case, maybe it's not this thing, we just keep it simple. Then you calculate the partial derivative with respect to theta for each Frickin term, which is going to be a lot, but this is why computers are fun because you don't have to do this by hand. Although clearly I like to do things by hand sometimes. Um, and then you take that of the cost function. La, 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 la. Okay. So partial derivative of the cost function with respect to theta, our parameters, because these are the things that can change, right? These are our variables. Um, so uh, this is going to be equal to the activation value of a particular node in layer, oopsies, in layer L. And then multiply by the error doo -doo -doo -doo, of that node. Um, sorry, of node I, so different node, um, in the previous layer, in the, the layer ahead. Okay, so that is what the partial derivative of our cost function looks like. Um, oh yes, for theta, whoops, oh my gosh, for lambda equals zero. So uh, we're not looking at regularization at the moment. Okay, so that was a lot. Um, take a deep breath, <laughs> partially for you and partially for me. Um, so basically, like this is kind of the outcome is we want to get this equation. Um, and so that's what back prop is, propagation is doing. It's helping us to find this error. Um, and we need to start from our known values and work backwards to calculate uh, the error 
for our whole neural network. Um, so basically, la la la. Um, you can kind of think about this as like the error of the cost function uh, for a particular node. Um, so we're kind of calculating all of these little mini cost functions for each of the nodes. Um, and so that's where uh, this comes in handy is like how accurate is our given node to the predicted value. Um, and then we use those tiny little cost functions to get uh, the derivative, the partial derivative of the full neural network cost function that we covered in the last video. Um, okay, so I think that's where I want to leave it because <laughs> that was a lot. Um, I hope that was helpful and I hope that you enjoyed my little rainbow neural network. Please let me know if you have any questions on like this. Uh, like I said, we will generalize it to multiple tra training examples and then we'll bring back forward prop and look at how you get like all of this. We'll kind of do it a little bit quick because I had a whole video on forward propagation. Um, but we'll smush the two together and we'll, we will quickly go through what is the procedure for forward propagation to where you get the hypothesis function. Um, and then how do you use that to do back propagation where you minimize your cost function. Okay, thank you very much for watching and sticking it through with me and I'll see you next time friends. Goodbye.